Right now, I would like to introduce to you one of our board members, the VP GM of the Data Center Group for Intel, Mr. Jason Waxman. Hey, man. Thank you. Good morning. First things first, um, happy International Women's Day to all of you in the audience. <clears throat> And one more note that as an open community, if we can't achieve parity here, then it can't be done anywhere. So we've got work to do. All right. I am here to talk about a couple of things. And most importantly, you are here because you want to know what you have to go see today. In my 20 minutes, all I'm going to be able to do is introduce you to things to go see further in the demo showcase. But we've got a couple of, of new products, new announcements, and some things that are pretty exciting that I want to be able to share. So I hope that you'll walk away with that view. I've been pleased to be a part of Open Compute since the beginning. Um, in fact, when we you know, formed it uh, uh, back in the day, we were one of the, the first companies on board. And since then, Intel is pleased to have been part of 20 different projects and contributions. So we remain as committed as ever to the mission of open compute. I think it's worth just taking a step back and asking what's the problem that we're trying to solve. I will absolutely get to the feeds and the speeds and the cool hardware in just a little bit. But the context of why Intel is involved and what we're trying to accomplish is to support digital transformation. There's a tremendous amount of shift. We're moving to a world of IoT. We're moving to a world where connectivity needs to adapt to this, what we call this virtuous cycle of devices that drive data back into the data center and then enable more intelligent devices. Real-time analytics, artificial intelligence, and the compute power and storage that's required to make that happen is critical. And so all of those things mean that we are moving to a world of, of hyperscale. And I think um, Masu could not have articulated it better that really to be able to compete, to enable companies to drive their business, we are moving away from systems. We build old school systems because that's the way we've always done it. There's a whole ecosystem designed around that. But the most efficient building block for delivery is moving to rack scale. It's about delivering the compute network and storage together to make that happen. Now, Intel, we straddle two different communities, and we're trying to bring that together. One is what we call rack scale design, or Intel rack scale design, which I'll talk about in a bit more is really sort of a logical architecture. And then the other is we're heavily invested here in open compute to really bring together the standards, the form factors, ensure the interoperability that's required to make this happen. And one thing that hopefully you can count on us for is that we've been committed to open, meaning that all of our contributions, when we look at uh, boards, systems, designs, we recognize that there's an ecosystem, not entirely an Intel ecosystem, that needs to play and participate. And we believe that allowing and supporting that innovation is crucial for the advancement of the community. So delving into what we're trying to do with rack scale design, we have a couple of, of key elements that are important. One of them that's really sort of more, I think, uh, implied in economic is performance efficiency. As we look at the rack becoming the building block of data centers, each of those building blocks, each of those racks has to maximize performance. When you look at the total cost of ownership required to deliver efficient data centers, performance becomes actually the number one criteria. And that's part of the reason that we continue to see a pushing of the envelope in thermal, on, in thermal and power envelopes to get to that higher performance. So performance leadership is critical. One of the things that we're trying to do at Intel is we recognize that to deliver a flexible, efficient, cost-effective, and open rack standard, we need to be able to architect all of those building blocks together. That it's not just about delivering a CPU, but our CPU lives very close with memory, with storage, non-volatile memory, um, silicon photonics, networking, fabrics, now accelerators, FPGAs, and the like. All of that needs to come together to deliver a solution. 
we've been trying to uh, provide standards that allow companies to manage these rack building blocks. And our first version of it, which we implemented again as an open API, was done already. We've just been pleased to announce that this, this past month we introduced the 2.1 software and APIs for rack scale design. And this enhances the pooling with pools of non-volatile memory storage, which is great for the Lightning platform, as I'll talk about that later. And of course, as we move forward into future generations, we're going to continue to look at a completely set of pooled architecture. As we continue to increase pooling, this drives the economic advantage of the rack. We are wanting to make sure that we bring, as I mentioned, these two communities together and ensuring that we've got good consistency between the two of them. And so what you can see out there on the floor today is I encourage you to go look at some of the rack scale designs that you will see. One, for example, you can see Quanta that is compliant to the OCP v2 spec, but also has the logical implementation for the rack scale design APIs, which incorporate the open standard Redfish APIs, again, making it easy to manage. And as a testament to the capability that we're talking about here, you can see in our booth a partnership between you know, WeWin and Ventec, AMI, and us about multiple different types of racks that are all managed managed within this common API standard. So our goal is to continue to do that. We will also make sure that the APIs are released publicly through GitHub by the end of the month. So trying to make sure we not just deliver open hardware, but the open software to be able to turn those into solutions. Now, management of the systems is not enough. We have to enable efficient workload scheduling because at a rack scale, you're really uh, provisioning those workloads at a macro level, as, as Masu and also Kushagra highlighted a little bit earlier. We're making sure that we provide more tools, more capabilities, and enabling to make that happen. One of the projects I would turn your attention to is Snap, which is a project for open telemetry. Currently, there are over 80 plugins out there in libraries for all sorts of different applications and collectors to be able to, to, to get aggregated metrics um, that plug into C++, Python, and Go. Many of you are from the high-performance computing community, and this has always been sort of a foundation of open software and open computing. We've put together a project called HPC Orchestrator, which combines over 60 different components, and this includes uh, things like Slurm, resource management, Lustre, OpenMP, compilers, dev tools, all designed to really make it easier for companies to do meaningful work on a high-performance computing platform, and also customize what's required, ranging from small clusters all the way to large high-performance computing implementations. And then we also are heavily invested in software-defined infrastructure, enabling enterprise computing for uh, Kubernetes, for containers, integrating a next-generation or, or cloud-native architecture in combination with OpenStack, and making sure that there are enterprise features and capabilities out there. It's not just enough to make sure that workloads are delivered efficiently. We are also working with the community to make sure that we think about power, which is crucial to the overall total cost of ownership in the data center. Um, Software-defined power monitoring is a key aspect of it. The notion that you can have power delivered and provisioned where it's actually required. Working with a company called VPS, we've been uh, working to promote a design that allows um, disaggregated uh, resource capability, a pooling of power management. And what this allows you to do is essentially do peak shaving through a combination of intelligent software and hardware management together. The result is that during peaks, you can go ahead and save cost or, or find a way to, to live through uh, certain types of, of downtime. So we think this is a very interesting solution. Now, we wouldn't bring it to you if VPS wasn't committed to the open community. And so two things that I'm pleased to share with you. One is that they will be integrating with the uh, rack scale design APIs, the open APIs, to allow for more seamless power provisioning. And second is they're committed to uh, providing a spec for firmware enabling for intelligent power management of devices. So if you're interested, please come by the Intel booth later and you can see more about that solution. Moving on to the hardware. So we've got the software to provision to manage the racks and to do intelligent power management. What are the various components of storage 
network and compute that we'd like you to go take a look at today. Um, one of the first, obviously, is, is Project Lightning, a way of getting cost-effective, high-performance storage for a wide range of applications that require hot and warm storage. Um, at Intel, we're excited that the next generation that's just been released through our collaboration with Facebook, WeWin, and MicroSemi now has an expansion for the PCI Express expansion board now to 60 lanes of PCIe Gen 3. We at Intel intend to support this with NVMe devices. We'll have both the 2.5 uh, inch by 7 millimeter form factor. That, by the way, will allow you to have very low power uh, components. It will actually allow you to have sub 10 watt drives that at uh, PCI Express Gen 4, so good performance but very low power. And then we'll also support a two and a half inch form factor at 15 millimeters that allows for full performance, full capability, and high speed. So we see this is a great design and also ties in very nicely with what we're trying to do with the rack scale design generation tool, non volatile uh, memory uh, pooling. We obviously have to connect data centers efficiently, and we see silicon photonics as a way to bring high speed uh, uh, di across distance within the spine of the data center. And as we talked about last time, we introduced um, the, the PSM4 module at 100 gig. We went into production, and we've now seen it ramp at a number of cloud service providers with very good feedback. I'm actually pleased today to talk about and I've got in my hand here the first 100 gig module for CWDM4 that will be ramping into the first half of 2017. So we're looking at bringing the volume, economics, and performance of silicon photonics uh, into the mainstream. Now, you can expect that we're already working on 400 gig, of course, and what really is going to make rack scale design truly breakthrough is when we're able to do network level integration in directly with silicon photonics and that's going to bring silicon photonics to the rack and dramatically reduce the overall cost of a high speed solution so high speed connectivity is what we're committed to. If you're interested in seeing more, please come visit our booth. We're going to be showcasing a switch which was also donated to OCP in co conjunction with Barefoot Networks. It's a, a six and a half terabit per second uh, wedge switch. So come, come see more about where we're going on the connectivity front. Moving on to compute, I'm very excited about a new contribution that Intel is providing today. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're very committed to the high performance computing com community. And more today than ever, with the rise of artificial intelligence, high performance compute is becoming a requirement. We've worked and collaborated with the industry to design what we call the Adams Pass board design. And the chassis here is basically four boards into a 2U, each with a 72 core Xeon Phi processor. So in essence, this chassis is able to get you know, roughly 25 uh, teraflops of performance into a, a chassis using Xeon Phi. And we're making this as a contribution, the board design as a contribution to the Open Compute Committee today. And we've also been very pleased to work with Penguin Computing, who's made the donation of the chassis to the Open Compute project. So very, very committed to making sure that high-performance platforms for things like deep learning training with bootable processors, highly parallel types of workloads can take advantage of, of our Xeon Phi technology. And Last computing, but certainly not least, I have today, um, as Kushagar highlighted earlier, I'm pleased to talk about the, um, the, the, the Project Olympus board. And uh, unlike Kushagar, who got, got it off easy with the lightweight PowerPoint version of the, the board, I have to, to lug this one around to kind of show you. So um, here it is. Thank you. This was my workout. This is as much as I get. Um, but we're really excited by this platform for a couple of different reasons. I think, first of all, it's a great collaboration with Microsoft, who is an amazing partner. I remember when they joined the project, I really knew that we were going to see a lot more momentum behind things. The other thing that's great about this platform is sometimes we got critiques from you in the community that the designs were too narrowly focused. They weren't expansible. They weren't general purpose for other types of needs. 
And that really creates fragmentation. It's difficult if you're a vendor to be able to support a platform like that. It's difficult if you're a user to do something that doesn't fit in with your environment. And this is really a major step forward to a, a platform for the community that has, I think, a much broader general purpose applicability. Now, we're pleased to be able to, to highlight that the CPUs that are in this board are our next generation Skylake processors. We, in previous two socket servers, obviously were focused in on delivering leadership performance, and we're committed to making sure that with Skylake, this is far and away the highest performing and most cost efficient platform that you're going to get in the industry. We are excited that this generation will have AVX enhancements and instructions that'll double the flop count for those of you that want to use this type of platform for something that's a, a compute intensive application. But as I mentioned, expansibility is important as well. And um, the ability to accommodate things such as uh, a, an FPGA into this design is becoming a reality and a recognition that we deliver high performance, but also flexible compute through Accelerator. So we're very, very pleased that the work of our collaboration with Microsoft is now out in the public domain and we are ramping production on the Skylake processors. Okay, so as I promised, we wanted to start off by talking about what we're trying to accomplish. We are driving the move to rack scale computing. It's a very complicated integration, but we want to make this community lead. We want you to help bring all of those components together so that the benefits of scale computing are accessible to, to all. Um, in doing that, I encourage you to come by our booth, take a look at all of the different computing designs, take a look at silicon photonics, the VPS solution, as well as the, the motherboards that uh, we've donated here today, and the rack scale design um, multiple uh, configuration demo as well. We also have a couple other sessions later today. Please come by Mark Seeger's session this afternoon, and he can talk about what Intel is doing in the community, and we would love your feedback on other projects that you'd like to see us contribute to and, and, and drive forward. And then Mohan will be talking later on about some of the software manageability and the details behind rack scale design. As always, it's a pleasure to be here today. Thank you very much, and I look forward to continued collaboration. Thank you. Thank you.